Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Mushroom Dungeon. I actually have a uh, product review for you guys today. I'm excited about something new. Uh, we got a lot going on down here. I got a uh, Reishi Genetics project going in the works here. I'm going to make a video out of that. That's been two, three months in the making actually. And uh, I'm actually building a new fruiting chamber. So I'm going to be working on that and making a video on that as well. So a lot going on. But uh, the main point of the video today is these guys right here. So Micropose came out with these new lid shields. And I saw them, they sent out a, like a text blast or an email blast, I can't remember on them, probably three, four months ago. And they sounded really cool. So I got in on like a waiting list to get them as soon as they were available. And I uh, finally got them. Uh, they just came in. And so I want to uh, run them in the pressure cooker and uh, just kind of see how they perform. Uh, when I first heard about them, I thought it was a really cool concept. Uh, Micropose, as you know, if you've watched my other videos, I really like their self-adhesive filter discs and injection ports for jar lids. That's what I'm using in my jar lids. I'm going to pull these lid shields off in a second. We'll show you what I have underneath. But uh, this is how they come, and uh, they're made out of silicone, and they just kind of uh, stretch over top of your jar lid, and kind of like a swim cap. That's the best thing I can equate it to, and it uh, took me a little bit to figure out the best way to get them on, uh, but they do fit really nicely over metal lids or plastic lids. I'm primarily using plastic lids for grain spawn now but i still use metal lids for my liquid culture so i wanted to try it on both and uh, basically these is, the intention of these is to replace the old foil lid um so i'm gonna run i still have some foil lids that's what i've been using so i'm gonna i'm gonna run some foil lids and i'm gonna run these new lid shields in the same batch and uh, we'll just do a comparison side by side and see how they perform okay so this is the old standby these are the old just aluminum foil lids and uh, let me pull one of these lid shields off it's one of our plastic lids here again this is uh micropose filter disc and injection port they're self-adhesive and i'm not sponsored by micropose or anything guys i'm not you know i wouldn't take money from somebody and push a product on you that I didn't think was cool. Uh, I'm not endorsed or sponsored by them or anything. I pay for this stuff just like you guys do. Um, I just, I really like their, their filter discs and injection ports. So when they came out with these lens shields, I figured I would check them out. But the old aluminum foil lid, you know, been using these forever. You just go over the top of your jar like that. So the purpose of these and the lid shields is just to protect, give your, give your lid some protection while you're running them in the PC. Once I pull these out of the PC and inoculate them, I pull the either the aluminum lids or I'm going to pull these lid shields off and uh, you know they'll just incubate with the lid just like this. Uh, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, uh, you wouldn't want to leave the foil or a lid shield like this over your jar lid uh, during incubation or for an extended period of time when you have a filter disc in your lid like this because what will happen is that creates like a constant moist environment and uh, so what can happen to you sometimes is you'll actually get mold germinating in little spots on your lid and it'll germinate on your filter disc and the problem with that is it can punch right through your filter disc and contaminate your jars so I always leave my jars in storage totes for incubation but I, I take the foil lid, or in this case, the uh, silicone lid shield, I would take off and I would just incubate it with the lid just like this in a storage tote. The storage tote kind of helps control the air movement around it, reduces contamination, but it also allows your, uh, your filter disc to dry out and remain nice and dry so you don't have to worry about mold germination and contamination from that that direction so like i said uh micropose uh has some cool products and the other thing with them is their sticker game is really tight so you get all these cool <laughs> stickers when you order from them and i got my uh i got my fridge all blinged out here 
with uh, some of my stickers. My ceiling emporium there. I got a bunch of micropose. Gary at Fresh from the Farm Fungi. So we're getting there. I got a lot of room left on the fridge. Tip of the cap. Got a lot of room left for stickers. Anyway, so these, as I mentioned, are made of silicone. And silicone is fine at PC temperatures. Not an issue at all there. So I'm thinking these might be a cool replacement. You know, they're still going to give our lids some shielding when they're in the PC. And uh, these aluminum foil lids, they do last a long time, but they do eventually wear out. I've noticed the, uh, the aluminum will start to kind of oxidize and then they'll crack and they don't really cover the lid adequately anymore. So these silicone lids, you know, I mean, I've run these foil lids dozens of times. These things are brand new. So I will, you know, we're going to do, we're going to run them one time and we'll review them, check them out, see how they look. But uh, I'll also obviously keep you updated as I use these over time, you know, repeated cycles in the pressure cooker and uh, see how they hold up over time. But uh, right now I'm thinking they're pretty cool. So I'm going to set the camera up and I'm going to show you guys uh, the best way I figured out to uh to pop these on like i said it's basically just popping on like a swim cap if you guys are swimmers uh it's the best thing i can equate it to you guys might think a little less of me but it took me uh several tries to figure out the best way to do this but i'll set the camera up and uh show you guys how i do it all right here we go so i'll do it with a metal lid and a plastic lid it's a little tighter on these pp5 plastic lids that i've been using but really not an issue at all so these are kind of stretchy so the best way to do it that I've found is just kind of hook it on this end and just stretch it over like that. And then you can kind of nestle it down. That's it. Super easy. I'll show you with a plastic lid here. Again, a little tighter fit, but no big deal. Again, just hook it here. Stretch it over. That's it. One thing I like about these two is that they do fit tight, but you can still grab your lid and check it for tightness with the with the lid shield on. You can do the same thing with aluminum foil, obviously, but uh, these do that as well, so that's a nice feature. Uh, these do have a little pinhole in the top here, and uh, I'm guessing you know that's that's probably a necessity because if not, the uh, air expanding underneath this this is basically an airtight seal here um, would cause this to possibly pop off in the pressure cooker so do have a little pinhole here to allow it to breathe a little bit that's it we're gonna put them in the PC I have seven quart jars here the reason I have seven quart jars is seven quart jars fit perfectly in the bottom of a presto 23 quart so we're gonna load it up we'll run it and I'm just gonna let it sit overnight to cool down and then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll we'll check everything we'll check our jar lids see how everything's looking um i am going to just uh take a couple of these jars and we'll do just the old school foil lid on them like so and that way we can com compare the uh the old school method to the to the new lid shields and so we'll check them all out and then we'll shoot them up with some liquid culture and get some spawn going by the way, I forgot to mention, guys, I'll show you the uh, the receipt here. These were $4 a piece plus shipping. So a little bit, little bit more of an investment than just going with cheap aluminum foil, obviously. But uh, if we like how they work and uh, they last a long time, uh, probably be worth it. So that's my receipt there for Micropose. And uh, I got four of them, and then I actually ordered eight other ones in a second order. So I have a dozen of them now to play with. So that's it. Four bucks a piece. Not terrible. All right. It's time for the big reveal. It's the next morning. Pressure cooker is cooled down. I have my mask on and the flow hood's running. So I'm going to just try and talk a little loud. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. But we're going to take the lid off this and see what we got. All right, everything's looking good so far. I think these two in front are my metal lids. The rest of them are plastic. So we'll get them in front of the flow hood and 
pop the lid shields off and see what they look like. I did uh, check the main lids for tightness, as I always do, as I pull them out of the pressure cooker. As I've mentioned before, uh, your main lids, whether they be plastic or metal, can loosen a little bit sometimes in the PC, probably from the heating cooling process. So I always make sure they're snug down as I pull them out of the pressure cooker. So all the shields are still in place. We're gonna pull them. I'm gonna do one hand uh, shield pulling here as I'm holding the camera. And uh, hopefully these will pull off easy. We'll see what they look like underneath. I have three LC syringes I'm gonna shoot these up with. I got the oyster bar going again. Uh, three different strains of oyster mushroom. I have my Bratislavian blue, which I love. My Italian, which I love. And then uh, I actually got a free syringe in, in with some other syringes I ordered from Lenny at Mycelium Emporium. That's the one in the middle there, and that is tarragon oyster, which I've never grown before. Apparently it's supposed to taste like tarragon a little bit, I guess. So I have some oyster mushroom substrate experiments I want to do. I think I have a, a idea down for a substrate that's similar to Master's Mix, but uh, might be a little more conducive to pasteurization. So I'm going to be trying that out with these grain jars. Uh, this is wheat spawn. Pull these shields and see what we have here. That's what you want to see guys. You don't want to see a lot of, you know, cooling liquid on top of your jar lids. A little more moisture under that shield, but no big deal. Another aluminum one. Nice and dry. can easily pull both of them with one hand. So I am noticing there is a little bit more moisture under the silicone shields, but uh, nothing that's gonna hurt anything. I always uh, give the lids a little wipe down with uh, a paper towel soaked in 70% isopropyl before I uh, shoot them up anyway with the LC syringes, so. That one's a little moist on the filter disc as well. I don't know if you can see that. That was a foil lid, so. I would say, overall, everything looks pretty good. There is a little more moisture uh, under the silicone shields, but not a big deal. I don't see any problems with the adhesion of the filter disc or the injection ports. Uh, I'll just be uh, wiping these down and shooting them up, so. Overall, it looks like these uh, silicone shields perform pretty well so if you're someone that hates aluminum foil lids you don't like making them or they they rip on you all the time uh, these are probably a good option for you it's just something you can buy online that'll work for a long time and uh, give you that shielding effect on your jar lids in the PC so kudos to uh, Micropose for trying to innovate you know and coming up with a new product I think it was a really cool idea and uh, it also seems to be effective so I'll keep you guys posted as I use these in uh, repeated cycles in the PC, but I don't foresee any issues with them holding up over time. Silicone is pretty resilient to uh, you know the pressure cooker run, pressure cooker temps, so I imagine these are going to hold up. I think these are going to work for me. I'm going to keep using them, but uh, not just because they work for me doesn't mean uh, you're going to love them. There's lots of different ways to uh, get things done in this hobby, and everybody kind of finds their own way. So hit me up in comments, let me know what you think, and I will catch you next video.